uh, you're new to the brigade. I can tell by the shine of your spurs. Mind you don't trip over them like old Arden Sortak did once. What? You ain't heard of Sortak? Yeah, the field marshal fellow. Long before that, he became one of the unspoken heroes of the Suns. Geesh, what are they teaching you young jocks these days? Well, plant your arse in the seat and I'll tell you a story. Barkeep, pour us around on Junior here. Now going back to 25 and the fall of the Redfield system to the Cappies. Scalabuck was higher ups were expecting them to attack Stein's Folly next, sure enough, and they did. Oh, the attack came quicker than even the bookies laid odds to, but it happened. So back when I was a fresh with coolant just like yourself, but my scores were good, damn good. So good I landed a spot in the heavy guards. Crack unit, you know. Uh, part of the prince's bodyguard, too. And Sortak was his commander. But I'd heard tell that he and Prince Davion... What do you mean, which prince? Jeez, I tell you. Hans, Hans Davion. Anyway, it was well known the two were friends going back as they did. So there was some disagreements or so I'd heard. But to think old Sortak was chaffing at the royal babysitting duty and wanted some action. Anyway, he ups and transfers to join the attack to retake Stein's folly from the Cappies. Came out later, old Max Leal had some mole inside the palace feeding him data, because he was a sneaky bastard for Kampelum. Yeah, it's in their blood, you know. Anyway, turns out that he set up a trap for our boys and girls, hoping to bloody a few good units. How'd I know about all that? Well, I'll tell you. Barkeep, another round here of my young friend. You see, higher-ups were tapping a number of units for temporary replacements and specialists, and yours truly is one of them. Anyway, this gal I was uh, sort of hot, hoping to date worked in Lee Hammond's command staff. Hammond? Seriously? Ah, uh, never mind. One story at a time, huh? So, the force breaks camps on boards of the dropships. Anyway, after some uh, personal sparring after duty, she ups and tells me that old Sortek had some sort of gut feeling about it being a trap. So he, Hammond, and a sharp egg named Felsner come up with a plan to turn the tables on those would-be ambushers. Damn cappies. So, there we were, the 5th Crucis Lancers, the 17th Avalon Hussars, and a, a number of other units made up a damn big fleet escorted by a couple wings of aerospace and some assault ships. Before we could hit the Cappies, spring the trap. I heard from a gal on the 17th that the Cappies had a large contingent of aerospace fighters that clawed their way up to greet us, being a plight source, those Cappies. Only we weren't the we weren't where they were expecting us to be, so you see old Sortex the sly one as his hunch proved correct. So instead of dropping us on Steins down, the ca uh, planet's capital, right smack in the middle of a bunch of those McCarran armored cavalry lunkheads. Ever face the Big Mac? Eh? No, of course you ain't. Well, they're damn near as good as the guards anyway. Old Sortex favored a victor. Salt machine, don't get me wrong, but it ain't natural to see a assault mech bounce around on jump jets like some flubberian flip-flopper on steroids. Like a lot of us, he misses the drop zone and comes down into a swamp. Nasty place, the swamps. Anyway, damn near plants his mech, but I hear he pulled some fancy acrobatics and did a belly flop instead. Him a cousin of mine, him a cousin of mine, Don Fitzgerald anyway, they extract themselves from a swamp, but are waylaid by both an air jockey who got Donald and a Zeus that wrecked Sortex Victor, forcing him to eject. Well, that didn't set well with the higher up. Sortex being a high ranked officer and all, and a friend of the prince, apparently the Cappies got all excited about it too, because next thing we know, the swamp is crawling with Cappy PBIs, stupid mud sloggers. Next couple of days is fast and furious as we're pressing the cappies hard, and eventually they take the hint and book for their dropships. Meanwhile, the search for Sortek ramps up. Eventually, you find him in a hospital the cappies have been using. I wasn't with the unit that found him and brought him in, but I was there at the mash trying to get this know, get to know this med tech with flaming red hair. Regular Natasha Krinsky looker she was. So in comes this APC inside of the colonel. Later, Sheila, I think that was her name anyway, Sheila goes on about Sortek having had a really hard time, broken leg, some sort of fever, and raving about crazy stuff. What stuff? Hey, that'll cost you another round there. Hey, barkeep. Yeah, stuff. Crazy stuff, she said. Sortek was alternating between little brown weasel people in the swamps that tied him to some tree, having seen the prince. Who? Damn it, man, pay attention. Hans Davion, laying in that hospital controlled by the Cappies. Must have been one hell of a fever, you know. That man was clearly delirious, and, and who knows what sort of nasty tricks those Cappies tried on it. I'm telling you, don't turn your back on a learn, but shoot a capellan on sight. Well, being a close friend of the Prince, Sortex medevaced off-world, and guess who gets stuck going along? Yeah, that's right, Sheila.
Oh, and me too, I guess, because, you know, well, my quick draw taking a beating. Damn fine machine, those quickies. Anyway, next thing I know, we're all packed into this dropship bound for Tharkad. Yeah, that Tharkad. Trip wasn't so bad. After all, I got to get to know Sheila a bit better. And a soft hand is just a sort of medicine that helps a fellow heal. Plus, we got a red, car the red carpet treatment by them learns. Damn fine folks, them. Well, don't leave your wallet laying around because they're going to want to sell you something. Damn learns. Well, my room was on the same floor as the colonel, and so I got a peek or two at that Melissa Steiner gal. Sharp as a whip and pretty as a can open. Eh? Why, we was all recuperating, of course, and all. So, anyway, I overheard Princess Melissa. Eh? Well, damn, if I know what the learns call her arcan designates, you gonna let me finish this here story? Barkeep, yeah, you know the drill. Another round. So that pretty princess was talking about doppelgangsters. Oh, damn, you know, people look like some of them ain't. So a month or two passes, hard to know, you know. And a whole bunch of us are packed back aboard a dropship bound for home. Now this last bit, gets it gets a bit tricky. See, Sartek had a bit of a soft spot for a comely officer. Let's be clear here, my fine young friend. I ain't one for fraternizing with my butters, least of all the brass, because, you know, that causes more heat than bad coolant in your mech. But another friend of mine tells me later that Sortek and his candid septarian sep to her friends. She and a few of her friends take one of them old working vacations, all with the prince's uh, blessing. They meet up with Sortek and they return to Stein's Folly in hopes of putting to rest a few of the colonel's demons. So, briefly, they visit that hostel where he'd been found. And the damn cappies are sneaky sorts. They'd mind the place with charges and traps. Sortek and Septarian barely get out of the before the the whole place comes down on top of their heads. Convenient, huh? Yeah, them cappies are pretty tight about keeping their secrets. Only they weren't on top of the game. Sortek found a bunch of pictures and holovids of the prince, all sorts of stuff that some cappy doppelganger might want to use for something sinister. Must have been something there, because they all pack up and hightail to New Avalon. Now, I just arrived home, and things were odd, to say it at least. First, we was all kissy-kissy with the Lyrans, because, you know, Melissa and caught the prince's eye, and then I'm hearing all sorts of scuttlebutt that the prince was breaking up things, breaking things off with the Commonwealth, and even then we might have been shooting terms, which was well stupid. Them damn cappies. Yeah, well, we handed them their asses in the fourth succession war, but that's a whole different set of stories. It was a long time coming, too, well... Well, yeah, yeah, I'll take another glass. So there was this gal who was a junior assistant to the assistant of the prince's major deed at his summer palace in Argyle. And I got to know her a few years after it all went down, but it seems it's the Sortec and Septari and some others that uncover some pretty horrific plot conducted by the, some of the old prince's summer staff. That their major D and some adjutant and had kidnapped the real prince and had him stuffed in that old dungeon one of Hans's ancestors had built beneath the palace. Meanwhile, that cappy double gangster fellow kept pretending to be the prince and stirring up all sorts of hate and discontent, especially between the sons and the commonwealth. But bet you can guess who might want a, that sort of thing to happen. My guess would be old Max Leal. He went insane, you know. If it weren't for Sortek and his pals, we would have, wouldn't have spotted the, or have this glorious federated comma that we got now, huh? Ain't no power in the sphere big enough to muckle this now. You can take that to the bank. And if you'd be thinking it's all a tall tale, go look it up in the basis library. Because there's some small bit of the two Hanses having a uh, confrontation. How they prove who was the right prince? Boy, son, you ain't learned nothing there at the Academy, have you? Battle of Mechs. No, no, they didn't fight no duel. What are they teaching you kids anyway? No, you know. Only the proper pilot of a mech can simply hop into his or her mech, start it up, power up the weapons, all those safety and security measures. So, when the false hands couldn't get his battle master to fire, everyone knew the truth. Nah, they didn't put that poor false hands up in front of a firing squad, although a number of others got hung or in prison, I'd been told. I heard the true hands took pity on the false hands, considering that he had been d doppelganged and all, and set up on some quiet, out of the way state to live the rest of his life. Meanwhile, Sortek's given a new victor and is a sign of thanks. Han sends him off to help push the cappies back off Redfield. And them taking, them talking heads and all the bids kept going on and on about how unjust or immoral or crushing the confederation was a few years later. But I'm telling you, ex Leo had it coming, doppelgangsters. Bah! Now, y'all want to hear a story about how I met Natasha Krinsky taking a moonlight dip? Twas.